Hey, Mr. Siebert here. This is our first video on simple harmonic motion. And in this video, I'm going to cover um, forces and energy in simple harmonic motion in uh, a simple spring block oscillator, which we'll see here in just a minute. Um, so the first thing is we've got a few equations to talk about. And the first one is Hooke's Law. Uh, and that just says that force is equal to the opposite direction um, of k, which is the spring constant. Um, that's going to be constant for any given spring, um, as long as that spring doesn't get damaged in some way, um, times x, which is the distance that spring has stretched um, past its kind of equilibrium point. So I'll show that in a second. Um, the second uh, equation is going to be the elastic energy equation, which actually has all the same variables. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more in a minute, but this is really the integral of this equation. Um, and so this just says that elastic energy is equal to one half times the spring constant times that distance um, from its equilibrium position squared. So let's take a look at um, a picture real quick and we'll be able to see um, kind of what I mean by that. So I've got four pictures here and this will be four moments in time um, all for the same spring block oscillator. Um, so here we've got a block. It's attached on the end of the, sp the, the spring here. And we're going to pretend there's no friction between the block and the surface here, just for simplicity's sake. Um, and that spring constant has a spring constant k. Here we've got um, the same block and spring, but now that block has been displaced um, from its kind of equilibrium resting position there. Um, and I'm going to just describe a couple things here. It's kind of like we've pulled that spring or that block from the equilibrium spot to here. Um, and it's got a velocity of zero and then we'll let go of it and it's going to move to the left. Um, and here it's going to have a, a maximum velocity V. At some point after it's been released and it kind of goes to the equilibrium point, it's going to reach kind of a maximum um, you know, compression here on the left before it starts moving back to the right. And so it's going to have a velocity zero there. Um, basically, it's changing direction. It was moving left. It's about to move right in some momentary that's got that zero velocity. And then finally, it's going to move back to the right and have that same velocity, but to the right once it reaches that equilibrium position. And it's going to go back to the right, eventually returning to this state right here. So next thing I want to talk about is um, what that x represents. And I said that's the distance from its equilibrium position. Now here, when it's got that maximum distance from the equilibrium position, we're going to call that capital A, and A for amplitude. Um, and if you'll notice something, um, the we're measuring from the middle of the block here. Whenever measuring from the edge, we're always measuring from the middle. So x equals A, and that's the amplitude from the equilibrium position to the middle of the block when it has its maximum stretch. Here, the x is 0 because the middle of the block is lined up with that equilibrium position line. So we have x equals 0 there. Here we have x equals negative or opposite of a. And so um, basically, it's been displaced to the left. So we'll have a negative there. And then finally, the x is 0 here at the end. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about before we get into energy too much is, um, and you know, if you're in calculus, um, you'll know a little bit about integrals. And this graph right here, f um, over x, uh, basically is this equation right here. I kind of got rid of the negative, which just tells us direction, so we'll ignore that negative for now. And so that's a linear relationship. And if we take the area of that, in other words, we take the integral of force over um, as a function of um, x here, that area that we get is our elastic energy. And so if you just use the, um, you know, the, the equation for the area of a triangle there, we could drive that and get 1 half kx squared. Um, also, another equation that's going to be relevant to us is the kinetic energy equation, um, because this is going to be moving at um, kind of between these positions here and here where it stopped, it's going to be moving so we can talk about it in terms of kinetic energy as well. So let's go through each of these four and look at 
what type of energy is present and also um, how much force is it experiencing from the spring. So the first thing is, um, in this first one, we've got the force equals um, K times the amplitude, and that's gonna be where we have the maximum force. Notice this is negative because the block's being pulled to the left. It also matches our equation over here. Um, also, our elastic energy will be maximized at this point, um, and that elastic energy will be 1 half Ka squared. If you notice, I'm just substituting A in for X, and in this case, A just means that we're at our uh, kind of maximum um, distance from that equilibrium um, position that I denoted with the dotted line. And then finally, our kinetic energy at this point is zero. And again, that's because we don't have any velocity at that moment. So whenever it's stretched out the most, we have maximum force, which is in this case in the negative direction. We have maximum elastic energy, and we have kinetic energy of zero. So if we want to know what's the total energy of the system, we can just calculate the elastic energy. That will give us the total energy because kinetic is zero. All right, in this equilibrium position then, our force is zero. And again, that's because... Um, our displacement, our x, is zero. So plug that into um, our Hooke's Law equation there, and we get force equals zero. Our elastic energy is also zero, again, because our x is zero. And our kinetic energy is maximized here. This is where it's got the fastest velocity, because um, after this point, it's going to start to slow down again. Um, and that's because this um, spring is going to be pushing it um, back to the right to, to slow it down. Um, and so we can calculate that kinetic energy. Now, a common thing that they, that a problem that we could solve is, let's say we're trying to solve for what's that maximum velocity. Well, if we know the spring constant and we know the, that amplitude, we could calculate the elastic energy, which is our maximum energy. And we could set that elastic energy equal to our kinetic energy. Um, and if we know the mass, and then we could solve for V. Essentially, we could do a conservation of energy um, problem with the spring block oscillator, um, thinking of it in these terms. Uh, we've got two more um, real quick that we'll go through. And so this, um, when it's at this uh, leftward kind of maximum amplitude, um, because we our X is negative A, that negative will multiply with the negative in Hooke's Law, and we'll get that the force is um, positive k times a. And that makes sense because at this point the spring is compressed, so that spring is pushing the block rightward, um, which has been slowing it down, now it's going to actually move it to the right. Um, our elastic energy is also maximized, and that's exactly equal to what it was at the beginning. Um, and our kinetic energy is zero. And then finally, back at this equilibrium position, everything else is going to be the same. Um, the force is zero, the elastic energy is zero, and then our kinetic energy is one half mv squared, um, which is that max kinetic energy. Now there are points in between, and so if you had a point that was say like in between this and this position, then well, we've got kinetic and elastic energy, and so we could still do conservation of energy there, we would just have to, you would have to know a little bit more about that, that in between state, um, but often, most of the time we just need to know about these kind of maximums um, where the, either the displacement is maximum and therefore our force and elastic energy are max or where our displacement is zero and therefore our force and elastic energy are zero and our kinetic energy is maximized. So these are all the kinds of things that um, you need to know in the AP test um, to do problems involving Hooke's Law um, and elastic energy in simple harmonic motion.